Now, when people mostly talk about well-being, they just refer to the physical and the mental. But two things that are not talked about enough that I feel are financial and spiritual well. Why go on dates and take the time to know that special someone when you can stay in the comfort of your home and watch beautiful women you will never have a chance with having sex with other men? Me, Simon, me, caveman. When Simon hungry, Simon hunt, Simon eat. When Simon want to mate, or Simon just horny, Simon take woman. That was amazing for you. When Simon scared, Simon run. But Simon also enjoy time with other cavemen. <laughs> Simon like painting, Simon artist. Simon enjoy time with family. But Simon not always relax. Simon always on lookout. Listen to sounds for danger. Never too comfortable. Comfort not good for Simon survival. Simon do anything to survive. As you can see, our ancestors prioritized short-term needs in favor of long-term plans. But they needed that to survive their environment. But you know what the funny thing is? We, in this day and age, we use that same instinct that they used, but we don't use it to survive. We don't face the same dangers they did. We use that survival instinct to get out of doing things that are hard. And instead we choose instant, immediate gratification. We choose immediate pleasure, anything that makes us feel good, instead of thinking long-term or a better future. Instant gratification affects four areas of your well-being. Now when people mostly talk about well-being, they just refer to the physical and the mental. But two things that are not talked about enough that I feel are financial and spiritual well-being. Choosing to get takeaway food instead of cooking your own meals. Choosing easily accessible sugary snacks or junk food or fast food in favor of a healthy balanced meal. Staying at home, playing video games all day or binge watching TV shows instead of going out for exercise or going to the gym and working out. Your mental well-being. Instinctively choosing to constantly, constantly reach out for your phone at every single instant and neurotically checking your notifications, your messages, maniacally scrolling through your feed on social media can cause anxiety, depression. Simply from comparing your lives which seem normal to the ones you see on there of all these happy memories people choose to show you. I mean, we know better, but it still affects us, right? The stories you see of all these amazing things people are doing apparently all the time. The reels, TikToks, all these endless TikToks that are slowly eating away at your attention span and taking you away from reality, your financial well-being. Now what that means is not constantly thinking about making money all the time, how to make money all the time, being money minded. No, I mean having enough money to do all the things you can is great. But what I mean is not having enough money is going to be problematic. How? Well, not having enough money can affect your mental health. It can make you stressed out. It can make you anxious, depressed about what am I going to do next? How, how am I going to pay my bills? Yeah, you start eating bad. You can't afford healthier food. You can't afford a gym membership. You can't take care of your family. Choosing to buy fast food, choosing that takeaway instead of buying groceries, saving and cooking your own meals over time or choosing to buy that dress, that gadget online that you see, which you don't really, really need, but you think it'd be cool to have. And you figure even though it's expensive, it's out of your budget. You can make, you can't pay for it, 
with all the options available online, you'll eventually be able to get it sorted. And when you see these ads that are constantly flooding your social media page, all of that, the choices you make affects your financial well-being, your spiritual well-being. I don't know how many of you actually think about this. I mean, I think about it quite often. Why are we here in the first place? It may sound like a really cheesy, corny question, but really think about that. Are you just here to spend time doing all these things which don't really have any meaning or add value to your life? I mean, these are your, the best years of your life just going by and you're not really doing anything about it. Nothing that gives you the instant gratification which I mentioned is going to further you as a person. It's not going to level you up in any way. It's all meaningless. If you're content just being alive and fine and going through every day with the, no with the same motions, that's cool. It's the same as everyone who just gives in to instant gratification. It's the easy way out. I don't blame you for taking that. But it's nothing remarkable. It's nothing special. Everyone does it. But if you choose to delay that, that feeling, if you choose what 99% of people will not choose, you will see something magical. Are you hungry? There's no need to get up and hunt like Simon or get up and cook or even step outside. Toby, thank you, my good man. Wait, who let you in my house? Why go on dates and take the time to know that special someone when you can stay in the comfort of your home and watch beautiful women you will never have a chance with having sex with other men? Or just up straight paper sex if that's your thing. Do you see something online at 3 in the morning that you just gotta have even though you don't really need it and it costs more than both your kidneys? You're in luck! With all the buy now, pay later options, you just can't. Who cares if you'll be in debt for years as long as you can get that limited edition hair dryer, am I right? Why leave the house at all and go to the gym and level up as a person when you can do the same in the comfort of your home by playing video games? Ah, that's better. Pew, pew, pew. Why get any productive work done when you can spend that time more wisely scrolling through and watching the best parts of your friends' lives or watch this instead? Yes. Now all these examples I just mentioned clearly provide instant gratification to all our needs, our physical needs like hunger, thirst, sex, our mental needs like acceptance, wanting to be seen by others, feeling good, that dopamine rush. But if you want to level yourself in the long run, you need to delay, need to learn to delay that. But why would you delay something that makes you feel good? Exactly for that reason. It's so easy to give in to this that it is an addiction. It gets to be an addiction just like any drug. And you know how that ends in the long run. It doesn't end well. So here are a few lifestyle hacks, like really small steps, small changes you can make in your day-to-day -day life. It's nothing major, it's things anyone can do, which will help you to learn to get used to delaying that gratification. Step number one is pretty basic. It's the first step in any 12-step program in, of addictions, right? It's admitting the problem to yourself, it's telling yourself, yeah, this is a problem that I am dealing with. I need to work on that. I am spending too much time on my phones. I wish I could do something about it. I wish I could eat healthier. I need to lose weight. I need to do that, right? So just know that for yourself. Pretty easy, but without knowing that, there's no point moving forward to the other tips. The second one is knowing your triggers. The easiest way to resist temptation of any kind is simply not to be tempted in the first place. So if you know that a certain something does trigger a need, a want in you, an urge, the best way to build your self-control against it 
is to avoid that completely. For example, and this is quite an elaborate one, it's, but it's also quite possible. If you're someone who has a drink on a Friday evening after what's been a long work week or a long week of study or whatever it is, you have that first drink on Friday thinking you just want to chill. But that leads to another drink and another drink and before you know it, you're binge drinking and when you drink, you can't help yourself from eating snacks, usually junk food. So you're drinking, you're having snacks, you take out your phone, you scroll through Instagram and after some time, you happen upon the accounts of these really hot models with big butts and you get a little worked up, you get horny and you think, huh, oh, maybe I'll just see how my ex is doing and you text her, which is not the best idea. And you're saying all kinds of shit. You don't remember the next day, but the night ends with you watching a bunch of porn, jerking off, passing out drunk, waking up the next day filled with regret and wishing it never happened in the first place. Feeling like shit, basically. And it all starts with that first drink. If you know it's going to be a trigger for you in any way, avoid it. Number three is eliminate the source of distraction. This is something that's worked wonders for me personally. If you're someone who is working on a project, a work project, a school project, could be anything, you're trying to be productive in some way or the other, but your phone's just there within reach and you can't help yourself from constantly reaching, reaching for it and just seeing what's happening. What's, what have you missed? Probably nothing since the last 30 seconds when you last checked, right? Because you can't help yourself from being neurotic about it. You just need to know what's happening even though there's nothing which is gonna help you finish that productive work. So what's helped me is to put that phone in a different room altogether, just out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. Put it in a different room, not even out of reach because you know, you will just get up and go get it anyway. If you, if you see your phone from across the room looking at you, you know you'll get up and go get it, see what's happening and then you'll sit there. You won't even come back and finish your work. So take your phone, put it aside and you'll be amazed how much more productive you can be. Or if you're brave enough, delete the apps you know you're distracted by. You claim you want to make a change, but if you're really serious about it, do it. I dare you. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever it is, take it out of your phone. Even if you take it out of your home screen, you just put it aside. It's the same as just walking across the room getting your phone. You know you can find the apps. Most people won't do that because they won't take that step. But if you're really serious about making that change, delete it completely. Fourth is get comfortable being uncomfortable. The comfort zone as you know it is a beautiful, beautiful lie. And the discomfort zone is a painful truth. Picture this scenario. You have finally made the decision, the life-changing decision to start working out in the evening after school or after work. Amazing. But, but all you've really done over the past few years is get back home in the evening, blob on the couch, play video games all day and binge watch that show that people are raving about. Oh, it's a must watch, it's amazing. You see that climax? Yeah. And all of that has automatically now become part of your comfort zone. And in your mind, you know that going to the gym, lifting weights, doing things on the cardio machines, it's going to feel uncomfortable for your body. It's going to be hard. And that automatically places it in the discomfort zone which is outside your comfort zone. The further something is outside your comfort zone and the more you don't do that, the harder, the more mental resistance there is to actually do those things. But here's the beautiful part, right? Working out is really good for you. In a few days, you will feel changes in your body. Even if you don't see visible changes, you will feel changes in your body like more energy mentally you'll feel better you'll feel more confident in yourself which is something you won't feel by staying home in your comfort zone it's by getting out and being uncomfortable doing the hard things 
that you see that change. Now, if you are trying to delay gratification towards a specific future outcome, for example, um, you want to start working out so you get a six pack. Remember, any goal you have, go about it with baby steps. Start small, keep your goals realistic. Have amazing big dreams. Never sell yourself short on that. Think big, think large, but keep the goals in getting there realistic. If you want a six pack and right now you're just completely out of shape, know that what you want is probably not going to get there in a few days or maybe a week, a month, or even a year. And that's okay. As long as you fall in love with the process, when you start seeing small changes in your body, you will fall in love with the process and it's going to be easier to stick to it and you will get there eventually. And when you do, it's gonna be so worth it. All the gratification you put aside will be worth it. Nobody eats a single hamburger and gets a heart attack. That's probably the result of eating lots and lots of burgers over the course of many years. It's the same with doing the right thing over the course of many years. The, the feeling, the, the benefits, they compound on each other. The changes, they compound. Before you know it, you'll be a different person. And finally, find your purpose. Unlike most of us, I wouldn't say all of us, but most of us, Simon and friends were likely pretty happy, fulfilled, and interested in life because every single action they took, every single thing they did had a direct and tangible impact on their life. Every single thing they did had purpose. All the short term things, the instant gratification their mind told them to do, everything was purpose driven. And unlike us, they didn't have to worry about debt, obesity or mental health issues which is what our instant gratification behavior over a long term, feeding that dopamine constantly is going to cause. If you wanna be financially stable, you wanna build side hustles, but you spend all day playing video games, binge watching Netflix, you see ads on social media for products and you click on them and then you pay for it using buy now, pay later, not even sure if you are gonna, if, if you're just gonna be living paycheck to paycheck, it's not, a good, it's not gonna help your financial future, is it? And if you want a sick physique, you wanna attract that really hot girl you have a crush on, and you just wanna be healthy in general, but you're making the wrong food choices. You stop by uh, that fast food place, the takeaway place after work. You keep snacks in your house because it's more convenient. You don't have to cook all the time. These are not gonna get you to your goal. So whatever your purpose is, if you wanna be healthy, if you wanna start a business, Take the steps, say no to the things you can't afford to say no to. Ask yourself, do I really need this? Take a few seconds before the decisions you take. Don't act upon them by instinct. Just take a few seconds to ponder on that decision. Is this what I really need? And think of the long-term goals, how it's gonna affect you, how you're gonna feel a few minutes later, a few hours later, tomorrow, Think of long term and see the magic happen. It's gonna change your life. Thanks for watching guys. As always, I really, really appreciate you taking time to watch this video and being here. I hope you found something useful to take away and you're able to use that in your life because trust me, all of us are capable of so much more than you think. A few years ago, I wouldn't have taught myself doing this, what I'm doing now. I have all these amazing plans that I see in the future not just doing videos and stuff, but other pursuits that interest me. And it's only because I started saying no to the easy things. Try it for yourself, see your life change, see the magic happen, and till next time, peace.